Good evening, everybody. It's just coming up to quarter past six, and it's Monday, the 1st of February. And a couple of things to discuss before. Drumroll, I give you an early free YouTube exclusive bet at Southall tomorrow afternoon, which is currently trading around nine to the two, and I think has got an absolute mega chance of winning. Now, the scenes at Sedgefield today are some of the most embarrassing for British racing I have ever seen. Annoyed me, annoyed my clients because we had loads of good bets at Sedgefield. Annoyed the trainers and those say annoyed the horses, but they wouldn't have known where they were going. Well, they annoyed the staff who'd set off and they had no less than five inspections today. Now, I know they're trying to get the racing on, but surely there must be a cutoff point. Now, we hung on. We had quality information. We hung on sending tips out. We then were faced with a choice. Do we leave it too late? We were told that it was just another thing, half past nine, half past 10, 11. Now, the racing was due to start at half 12. They announced they were going to look again at half 12 and make the racing start at half one. Now, I'm all for trying to put racing on, but by then, jockeys had arrived, trainers had arrived, the horses had arrived, people who put bets on were ready, and it made Sedgefield and Jumps Racing look a complete laughing stock. So Holden's horses, prayer is, please, racing authorities, introduce a cut-off time when a clerk of the course must make a decision. Is it on or is it off? And if we lose the occasional meeting that would have been on if they'd held on, but what could have possibly changed between half 11 and half 12? Now, I'm a very understanding man, but I was fuming. So, there you go. Holden's horses, give me the thumbs up if you agree with me. We plead the racing authorities to listen to us, and I know many of them will be tuning in. A cutoff point. I suggest two hours before the first race. So today it would have been half 10. Make a decision. Is it on or is it off? There we go. Now on to happier news at Wolverhampton Combine, given at six to one this morning in our three-way combo as one at six to one, done the business under one of the great rides by Tom Mark and how he got that horse up. There was a photograph. It looked to the naked eye as though we got beat. So, of course, you start shouting, what are you doing? What are you doing? Then they announced the result of the photograph, and you go, oh, what a fantastic ride. What an amazing ride. Because let's be honest, there's no bigger hypocrite than the punter in a photo finish. But done the business he did for Hugo Palmer, six to one combined. And as I've just pointed out to my stat man, the prof, of course, the round robin, if you get one winner, they double the odds, so it becomes a 12 to 1 winner. So fantastic. So profit on the day. I've got a bet for us at Sol. Now, a few uh, emails in and requests to the office as to why I don't give selections in the special rearranged uh, jumpers, bumpers, or should it be bumpers, jumpers meetings? Now, these are for jump sources that have had uh, not been able to run. So they have to be entered in a meeting that's been called off and they all get together to have a race at the all weather tracks uh, on National Hunt flat races. Well, I'm going to tell you something now. If you tip on those, you should be struck off the tipsters register. And if you bet on those guys, you want your bumps feeling because these are random races. If you want a random punt, go and play an arcade machine. OK, I really do think that these things should carry a punter's wealth warning. So, folks, if you're emailing in as to why I'm not tipping in them, then there's your answer. And please do not punt in them. They are to keep horses fit. All sorts of uh, nefarious antics could go on. And the trainers could, uh, jockeys could say, well, he's not a bumper horse. You know, he's a jump horse. So please, please, I'm on my soapbox twice tonight. Firstly, about the uh, dreadful scenes at Sedgy and as to why you should not punt. A wealth warning should be given. But this this one is in a genuine all-weather meeting at Southall. Anyone says South, well, they're out. It's Southall. And it is a Van Dyke. Now, this one isn't injured like the real one is. 
But this trained by uh, Anthony Britton, written by Cam Hardy, big, big fans of both, was involved in some strange antics at Newcastle where it didn't look like it wanted to start. Now, that was a different track. If we come back to Sutherland and look, it's won here in January. It was second to the favourite here last time and gets a weight pull and got going very late. I think if Cam Hardy's about in uh, about his tactics better and gets stuck into this one early, I think Van Dyke at 9-2 to two seems to be priced up on his antics at Newcastle. Well, maybe he just doesn't perform at that track. But back here where he has a fantastic record, the stable are going great guns. I think 9-2 to two needs grabbing as I think this could go for about 3-1. to one. 440 Subtle tomorrow. It's Holden's early bird YouTube flyer for tomorrow. 6-1 to one winner free today. This is our free selection for tomorrow. Now, uh, the Bombproof and Mastermind obviously didn't run. They were at Sedgy. But those of you that came over, welcome. And my, I urge you, if you made a few quid today on the 6-1 to one shot, then think very seriously about getting involved in Bombproof and Mastermind. Two great services combined into a super group, all bets sent by free text, early doors, and you'll be with me till the 31st of December. And you'll be in the uh, penthouse suite at the moment with the freebies. You're in the lobby, and it's a fantastic lobby. Get yourself in that lift and be with me in the penthouse suite. And let's get you to the platform, Mark Profit. Right, I think Van Dyke's a cracking bet at nine to two. I really do. I think it's overpriced. I think the market will correct itself and it'll go off shorter tomorrow. I'll be back in the morning. No bumpers, jumpers, jumpers, bumpers for us. But there's a genuine meeting at Subble. And as things build through the week with the services, we will get back to some normality. January can do this. I'm not blaming uh, any course for trying to get racing on. I'm complaining about the way they did it. Uh, but Jumps Racing will be back. We've got the Irish Racing Festival on Sunday with many of the great Cheltenham fancies out. Some big bets planned for that. We've got a big, big Saturday of Jumps Racing, which, fingers crossed, there'll be enough time to get that on. But for now, well, there's winners to be out there. I will be looking for them. But a 6-1, to one. let's make this February an absolute monster so have a great night folks um and i'll be back tomorrow we've got van dyke this one better not be injured not like that liverpool one although they seem to be doing all right yesterday <laughs>